What do you think of when you think of a perfectionist? Is it a Hermione type with perfect grades? Or a discerning genius who will accept nothing less than perfection, whether it's in wine tasting or bond trading? Often we think of the rom-com trope of the uptight heroine who has her life completely organized down to the last detail and who just needs a man-child to loosen her up. See here, 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 and here. By the way, note how perfectionism is portrayed as genius in men and neuroticism in women. Hmm, how interesting. But you may be surprised to hear that most perfectionists aren't like that. These stock characters are successful perfectionists who have managed to somehow accomplish the illusion of total control over their lives. For most of us perfectionists, and I include myself in that group, our lives are chaotic and messy. Perfectionism makes them even more messy. And we hate mess. But there is an artist who doesn't, and I think she has something to show us. By the way, I'm Nancy Langham Hooper, PhD, art historian, and cultural enthusiast, ready to use the great art of the world to help you out. Do you think that's cool? Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ding the notification bell, and YouTube will keep you up to date on all my shenanigans. Not that perfectionists have shenanigans, or do they? Perfectionism isn't an addiction to to-do lists or organization. It's a state of mind that is quite black and white. You are either perfect, or you are a total loser. No middle ground. So, how do you know you're a perfectionist? Search your thoughts for the magic word, should. The evil should, of course. There is a good should. Yeah, we should get together sometime. Maybe I shouldn't have brought all these bees to the wedding. Those are logical and proper, but perfectionism is the evil should. I should know what to do in this situation. I shouldn't have this treat because I'm not good enough. I should have done this task by now. See? Evil. Not true. Very all-or-nothing, black-or-white thinking. No room for nuance, circumstance, and yes, mess. And wow, have I got a mess for you. This is My Bed by Tracy Emin. It was done in 1998 and caused quite an uproar at that time because, well, it's really her bed. People were like, what? And whoa, what a mess. We see an unmade bed with stained and dirty sheets. Stockings and period stained underwear are thrown on top along with a towel. Off to the side, we see two suitcases tied together with rope, but most of the mess is on the floor next to her bed. The stool that serves as a bedside table is overflowing with empty cigarette packs and an ashtray full of butts, a stack of Polaroids, the top picture showing the artist's happy face, loose change, a candle, a condom, nail scissors, a barbecue sauce pack from a fast food restaurant, and other assorted rubbish. It only gets worse on the floor. A cute stuffed dog seems to watch over what kind of looks like a crime scene. A huge pile of toilet roll used as tissue is pushed up against the stool. Half-used medicines, empty vodka bottles, and a tampon applicator lead the eye to a pair of well-worn slippers. The empty cigarette carton and empty packs around it attest to how much the occupant in the bed smoked while she was there, and the used condom and tube of lubricant point to other activities as well. Every time Emin sets up the bed, Things are in a slightly different position. There's so much to see here. The weird Ernie doll? Exactly how many pairs of underwear are present? And why didn't she drink her Orangina? Orangina is delicious. The mess is quite revolting, especially as you look closer. If you walked into someone's house and saw this scene, what would you think of that person? You'd probably think that they were a mess. And you'd probably be right. After a breakup in 1998, Emin stayed in her bed for four days, depressed and suicidal. She finally got up, had a glass of water, came back to her room, and saw the mess she'd created. This absolute mess and decay of my life, 
is how she described it. If this was your bed, how would you feel? Like a failure? Like a loser? Like a mess of a person who will never get it together? Would the evil shoulds show up? You shouldn't have made such a mess. You shouldn't be so disgusting. You should have your life together. That's what I would think anyway, in my perfectionistic way. And yet, Emin was able to do something extraordinary and compassionate. She was able to reframe this mess. She says, I spent four days in the bed, and when I got out of bed, I looked at it and thought it was disgusting. And then I realized that this bed had probably saved my life and kept me safe. And then at that moment, I just saw it in a white space, and I realized it was art. The mess saved her. It didn't condemn her. And she knew that by putting it in a white space, by contextualizing it as art, she could share her time of vulnerability and survival with the world. She took that moment of revulsion where perfectionism would condemn her and transformed it into compassion for herself and transformed that into art. Modern and conceptual art is often about transforming everyday objects into artworks. We saw this in Yoko Ono's Ceiling Painting, Yes Painting, where she didn't create the latter or other parts of the piece, but put them together to create a powerful idea. When you take something ordinary and turn it into art, or put it in a white room, as Emin says, it becomes symbolic, larger than itself, reverberating with meaning and emotion. So now, those four bad days in 1998 and the resulting messy bed have a completely different context. They show the vulnerability, the chaos of this period of the artist's life, and her courage in not being ashamed of it. By reimagining the mess as a work of creativity, not destruction, she's made it beautiful. A beautiful mess. And she very nearly won the Turner Prize, so bonus. And can't we perfectionists practice the same type of reimagining? Our evil shoulds create messes. We procrastinate because we don't want to fail. We punish ourselves. We set unattainable goals. We live in an imaginary future where all of our ducks are finally in a row, ashamed of our chaotic present. But let's be more like Tracy. Let's have compassion on ourselves instead. It's not about how life should be. It's about accepting and loving yourself through the mess that is. So next time you have a messy bed in your life, whether literal or metaphorical, stop and reframe. Is it art? It probably is. So I hope that's helped you to evade the evil shoulds. As always, I have links in the description below if you'd like to know more about Tracy Emin, my bed, or perfectionism. And if this is a real problem for you, I highly suggest seeing a qualified therapist. One of the greatest weapons against the evil shoulds is an insightful and compassionate counselor. Okay, my friends, deep breath. You got this. I'll see you next time.